You should 100% be using keybind groupings across all of your characters in World of Warcraft. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please stay tuned, listen up, because it's going to make you playing this game and your experience playing this game much smoother and easier to pick up new characters you've never played before. You will go from not knowing where to put certain key bindings or certain key bindings feeling weird and clunky to being obviously sh they should go here. What's up, people? I'm the Dungeon Coach. I'm here to coach up your game to be more optimal and efficient. That's the big thing I love here, and key binds are a huge passion of mine. I have a video linked in the description for part one of this video of talking about where the key binds go. I will show and talk about the different places of what buttons we should put, but there are four different tiers of the efficiency of buttons. It's a lot easier to press buttons like the button R than it is to go out and press the button six. It's more of a stretch to press certain buttons. That philosophy of where to put buttons also will play in here to what I'm talking about. So if you do want to see that video of where the buttons should go, that one is part one. This is technically part two, but you can watch them in whatever order really. What keybind grouping is, is taking different types of abilities across all characters and grouping them into a certain category and then similarly binding that that category of button to the same things. For example, on my Vengeance Demon Hunter, if I press my mouse button over here, one of my mouse buttons, it puts Sigil of Flame right there. Now I'm on my Death Knight, I press that same button and it's Death and Decay. The same type of ability with the same exact button across different characters. You see where I'm going with this? On my Guardian Druid, mouse will scroll forward is charge, it's a feral charge. Now on my warrior, that same button that I use for Sigil of Flame and Death and Decay, that same button uses Spear of Bastion, an area of effect area right there. And my druid, that was mouse wheel scroll forward, on my warrior, mouse wheel scroll forward. Whenever I press G, it's always an AOE ability around my character. R is always a single target hit in front of me. Usually my main, main rotation ability that I use the most often. Q is usually a ranged throw attack that's always throw glaive, Avenger's shield, heroic throw, for the warrior. Z on my warrior is my leap. And on my demon hunter, Z is my infernal strike, another leap type of ability. And guess what mouse will scroll forward is? Fell charge, the same thing. And G is the area of effect around me, immolation aura. R is my spammable ability. Mouse wheel scroll back is my defensive tanking cooldown of demon spikes. On my warrior, it's shield block. On my druid, it's iron fur. You get the idea. So now whenever I play a new character or any character, I play them similarly. And if I want to play and jump around in different characters, it's not a huge, my brain doesn't have to explode every time I do it whenever I try it. Cause I do want to play all six tanks. I want to make videos for the tanks and all this different kind of stuff. Maybe the healers too. Maybe who knows, right? But I want to be able to jump and I can jump around from tank to tank, from dungeon to dungeon every time and I feel fine. And if Z is my number one jumping mobility type of thing and I, I play a mage, I picked up a mage, I wanted to play a mage, I never really leveled one. I leveled one up and then I, I got Blink. Where do you think I put Blink? On Z. Now real quick, time out for clarification here. Um, here's my keyboard. I, I've said some things about using G and R and Z and stuff like that. Uh, I use ESDF for my movement. I'm not gonna do a whole thing on it. I have a whole video about why you should be using ESDF for your movement. I talk about it also in the key binding video, but that's why Z is very simple for my movement. R and G are very simple for an AOE ability and a single target. But now here's what I wanna show you. This is my spreadsheet. Now this is only, this is a limited version of the spreadsheet. Um, this is my Death Knight. This is is my demon hunter and this is my priest. I wanted to kind of get so just the different versions of it. A disciplined priest, the blood death knight, and a vengeance demon hunter. Uh, these are my abilities and how I do this. Yes, I have a spreadsheet. Yes, I'm a major nerd. I know I get it. It's fine. I have these spreadsheets for every character. I just want to show you all a little snippet here of what you want. Uh, for my patrons, I show all of these different types of things and documents and all these other stuff, uh, the behind the scenes that I, I give that to my patrons to help support what I do here and whatever they ask for. If they want to see what my bindings are, whatever, update it, all that good stuff. So if you want to check that out, links in the top of the description uh, to help support what I do here, appreciate you. But here we go, this is the big picture of everything. So what I've done here, I've set up my different categories. This is the category, and this is the same thing across the board. If you see all of my characters on button number one is the health stone for everyone. So if I wanna press a health stone, it's the same on every character. If you don't have health stone is the same on every character, tell me why, because <laughs> That's, that's just the problem. Number two is potion. Now again, I say it's not a problem and I'm not making fun of you for this and I'm not looking down on you for this. In my live streams, I help people with keybinds all the time and I love talking and helping people with this. It's just gonna be better. You're gonna have a better time playing this game. So two is always potions, you get the idea. But before we get into that, here are the different categories of keybinds. First type is rotation and there are different types of these rotation things because each button and however many buttons you have in your rotation are gonna be a little bit different. Some of them might be range. You might have some sort of thing where that's part of your rotation 
rotation. Like paladins have a ranged Avengers shield. They throw that. It's part of their rotation. So in general, my ranged throws are in a certain spot. Like I said, mine is on Q. So I know that that is an easy button to press. I go on Q and I hit that for my throw. But even if it's not part of my rotation, I might still put my throw just like heroic throw or throw glaive or whatever on that same button just so I keep everything universal. Then you have a spammable button. This is the one that you're going to be probably pressing the most often. I usually put mine on R or whatever it is. Whatever that button is, you hit all the time. Builder and spender is different types of things in your class. All They're all different. Certain things you use, 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 use to build up a resource of some kind to then spend it. A lot of times I like to put those on opposite sides of my hand. So if I use R for builders and W for spenders, that kind of feels good. Maybe you use R and stuff like that for builders and then four and five for spenders. Or if you like to use one, two, three, four, five, then maybe your ones and twos are builders and four and five are spenders. And then there's also AOE, any sort of AOE type abilities. I like to put that in the same button for me is G. And if I have a secondary AOE ability, I put that on T, maybe a third one, I put that on V, all close to each other on the keyboard so it thematically makes sense. Then you have rotation cooldowns, which are a part of your rotation, but they're on some sort of 30 second to a minute cooldown that you do want to use off a of cooldown, but it just has a cooldown on there. So you're not going to be pressing it as often, so it would be on a different tier of the tier list as far as keybinds, which you should check out my other video for. Here's the quick little sneak peek from that of the different things. Green is tier one, yellow is tier two, purple is tier three, red is tier four, and I also do have in that video a WASDF version for you WASD people, which actually probably are the majority of people, so be nice to me. Anyway. Offensive CDs are cooldowns that you use to deal more damage in the moment. You're not necessarily using them off cooldown. They're a little bit more situational and they have certain burst windows where you want to capitalize on. Defensive cooldowns are the same way, but if you're getting damage and you're taking damage and you need to use them situationally to survive certain things or you're really low on health. Utility cooldowns are very situational and kind of different for each class. That varies the most across all classes for all of these things. Movement is just the general movement abilities that aren't on that long of a cooldown. 15 seconds, 30 seconds, something pretty quick that you'd be using a little bit more often. Movement cooldowns are things like Druid Stampeding Roar, or Druid's Dash, things that have a longer cooldown but are still a use of mobility. And then you have your interrupts, which are a very important button to press because when you need to interrupt, you need to hit that now and quickly. So it should be a little bit higher priority because of the urgency to it, but you don't press it as often. That's fine. And then in that similar category are crowd controls, where you want to crowd control something. Now in PvP, crowd controls are going to probably be a little bit more important compared to a PvE. There's the big picture. Now we're going back to this chart. So you can see my personal version of this. So you can start thinking of this for yourself, because by no means do I want to sh say that all of this stuff for you, you should buy in and use my keybinds. I'm showing you in this video to kind of help you challenge your brain a little bit and think about what you got going on. You might like some stuff I say, use it. You might not like some stuff I say, don't use it. So the biggest thing I want you to pay attention to is this type of thing in this column over here, because this is universal, more so than tanks, damage, healing, whatever it is, is usable for everyone. Yes, I usually tank more often, but you can still use these tips and tricks for yourself. So one, health stone, two, potion, three is a self heal of some kind. Priests have a desperate prayer where they heal themselves and themselves only. Death knights have a sacrifice your ghoul death pack type of situation. Demon hunters don't really have anything. So I literally on my demon hunter, I don't have anything bound to three because they don't have have some sort of instant personal heal. But if they do in the future through some sort of talent or ability or maybe a trinket or some kind, I might move where I normally put my trinkets onto that if it makes more sense in my brain. Four and five are usually some sort of tanking cooldown, but it has to do with more offensively and damage. So four and five, offensive damage stuff. And it's it's off the screen right now, but shift R, shift T, and shift G are always my tanking cooldowns. And those are the defensive cooldowns that I use for my oh shit buttons. If I'm on my mage, shift R, I block. If I'm on my hunter, shift R, feign death. You get the idea. Next up is caps lock. Yes, I do bind caps lock. I talk about it in the other video. It's a little long story. Uh, but A and caps lock are really nice paired next to each other. Again, if you don't use WASD. So I usually have those buttons be similar versions of one another. So for a death knight, it's dancing rune weapon and then tombstone, which is something you use in correlation with dancing rune weapon. Usually as part of a rotation, you would use dancing rune weapon and then you have, a, you gain a ability from it and you press the tombstone to explode it and they kind of go together in the same way with my demon hunter fell devastation i'd use this breath attack that turns me into a demon that's very nice and then if i use caps i turn into a demon similar mental things going on here moving on through q is always my ranged rotation part of the thing death's crest for a death knight throw glaive for a demon hunter as you saw w is usually my tank heal or spender in some kind whatever i'm trying to use to keep myself alive warriors have an impending victory demon hunter soul cleave death knight's death strike all that stuff r like i said is my 
my spammable builder. I'm gonna spend, I'm gonna be pressing this button the most out of everything. T is usually more slanted towards AoE. It's maybe a situational AoE ability like revenge for warriors or something that's more a proc based. I like to put procs on T, that's another thing. So for Demon Hunter Spirit Bomb, you only use Spirit Bomb if you've accumulated enough of a certain resource and then you use it. So T is a nice little, and I use it uh, as a proc based thing. G is always my AoE ability of some kind around myself. Z is always mobility. X is a secondary mobility. C is always taunt. From all of my tanks, C is taunt. You don't always taunt that often, but when you do need to use it, I just pull my finger down, press C. V is always a dispel of some kind, like dispel magic. Demon hunters are like consume magic, but uh, death knights don't have anything like that. Warriors don't have anything like that. So a similar thing I saw that warriors and things that don't have dispels do have this version of is a slow. So that is one difference. If I'm playing my warrior or death knight, V is slow, chains of ice or hamstring. And if I'm playing other classes like that have a dispel, V is my dispel. I don't have a class that has a slow and a dispel, but if I did, I'd probably put the other button on X or something similar or close. Or shift V, that's an option too. B is my transmog map and Y is always my extra action button. F1, 2, 3, 4 are interface character panels because who presses F1 through 4 for stuff? I use that for interface stuff. Now for my mouse button, mouse button right here is always my trinket 1. And my mouse button 2, if I do shift mouse button, is always trinket 2. Now the mouse wheel scrolls is where I vary it up a little bit. For my death knight, scroll back is just too good of a death grip. It feels great to target something and scroll backwards and pull it towards me. It just makes so much sense in the same way that scrolling forward to charge makes sense. So that usually trumps what I'm about to say because usually my mouse wheel scroll down is my active mitigation in some way. Demon spikes, something I quickly just flick my mouse and I activate that certain thing. It's an active mitigation thing that I want to put on myself. Cool. Then we have all these mouse buttons and it's going to be easier if I just show you a mouse. Here you go. So this is the also image from my tier list video. Green is tier one, keybinds, yellow tier two, purple tier three. So clicking in your mouse button is a keybind. Scrolling forward and backward is a keybind. And I also talk about if you're worried about your camera zooming in and out, I talk about it in that too. Don't worry, you shouldn't be zooming your camera in and out with your mouse button anyway. And if you do, you can always do control, scroll in and out, or alt, scroll in and out. You don't need to move your camera that much. And if you do, that's weird. But anyway, for my mouse, always, always, always scroll back is some sort of defensive cooldown. Scroll forward is usually a charge of, of some kind or whatever situational things make sense for the class. Middle mouse button is always my trinkets. This button right here is always interrupt. If I have an interrupt, it's right there. Always. This button, a stun. Always some sort of stun that I can single target stun. This crowd control, some type of crowd control. So all my CCs and interrupts are always right here, no matter what I play. And then these four buttons are usually my my, my cooldowns of some kind, my offensive cooldowns. Now, button number two was that uh, Death and Decay, Sigil of Flame, Spear of Bastion, that AoE reticle that I put on the ground. That's always this button right here. That is a little bit of a different thing. That's an AoE I like to put on the ground right there. But usually three is a big, a big cooldown of some kind of way, usually offensive. Same thing here. Same. And this button number, it's, it's, usually an AoE stun of some kind. If I have an AoE stun, this is a single target stun, this is an AoE stun. It just makes sense in my head, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and these are usually more situational uh, cooldowns in some way. And then these last three buttons, I used to have them bound to other things and then I just have so many keybinds and I, I feel like in general, I have, I'm have i very good at doing keybinds and I, hopefully this video is helping you with your keybinds as well. And I'm fine on keybinds. I don't need to have these three. So I've chosen for these three to be a very good quality of life. This is my mount button. I press it to mount. I just, my thumb's already right there and I press the back heel of my thumb and I just press it and there's my mount. Super simple. This are raid targets. You know when you put the skull and the star and the X on the people? That is the button I do for that. I hold it down and there you go. And there's the mark the skull. If I press it once, it's a skull. If I hold it down, our Opie ring comes up. I'll have a video coming out about Opie as well. And I talked about it in the last video. And this is my, my quest log, my quest log slash map. And it pulls up my map. How many times in the game do you pull up your map to look at something and put the map down? Uh, map, map. And this is just a very simple. So these are not in combat based, but that's fine. So I hope I really got you thinking about how to put your keybinds. The first video talks about where to put your keybinds, and this is pairing them together and organizing them in a group so you can play multiple characters or you're just your one character in the best way possible. Because if you have some of your rotation abilities in different spots and then your rotation, if you imagine playing through your rotation and you're putting buttons here, there, and you're all over the place, it's just going to feel real bad. And if you have a tanking cooldown or some sort of long cooldown in a spot that 
that you n never really press, or you should just move things around. I would recommend getting an Excel spreadsheet, writing down all the possible keybinds. This is literally what I do. Write down all the possible keybinds. One, two, three, four. Probably don't put six, seven, eight on there. That's crazy. Don't press those. And you go all the way through. You write down every single option you possibly have. And then you also write down every single ability that you have that your class has. Go through your spell book, write down all the abilities, and then you can put and move them around and make your keybinds. It's going to take you like 20 minutes to do, but it's going to be so, so worth it. And you might feel weird doing it, but it's going to be okay. Give it a week, give it two weeks, and you're going to feel better and perform better. And it's going to be a higher quality of life. Trust me, it's going to be better. And if it is, leave me a comment. Let me know. If it's not, you can come back, like the video, say you hate it. I wasted your time. And if I did, I, I'm sorry. I'm really trying to help here. That's what I'm doing here on this channel. If you want to help support what I do, click the link in the description for Patreon. Join it. All of my keybinds, all of my weak auras, macros, every single thing I do, I want to give back to my patrons to help me do this thing and have it be a reality. And thank you guys so much. Stay creative. Think outside the box. Peace.